Drew Alexander Ford, also known as That Viola Kid, blends styles of music with great success. He's been in a week-long residency at Spivey Hall now, working with school groups from all across the South Metro area. Tomorrow evening at Spivey, he'll perform a concert titled Hindemith and Hip Hop. I spoke with that Viola kid about his work with young musicians and his future projects. He began talking about similarities between classical music and hip hop. I think that both of them have incredibly rich histories, and it's really hard to make an authentic fusion when you don't understand the intricacies and the nuance and the histories of both. So for the past year, I've been really just trying to learn more about hip hop and really understand how it's constructed, understanding the four pillars. And I think if you want to be a part of the conversation, it's important to understand what people are talking about and like how it's being created. And how would you make music of the future if you don't know what's already been done? And so it's kind of a process of elimination, just figuring out what do I have to say? Is this a good time to put whatever I want out there? Is there somebody else doing it? If so, how can I do it differently? Or can I collaborate with that person? So still a lot of discovery going on. Now, on November 15th yes. at Spivey, mm -hmm. how will you showcase the blend of hip hop and classical with Hindemith and hip hop. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny. As I was preparing for this Spivey show, I was also doing a brand deal with Marriott. And so uh, during that brand deal uh, and collaborating with them, I wanted to write a song that was authentic to not only me as a violist. And what's more viola than Hindemith? Like, <laughs> he, loved really it. Hard. he was like, he premiered the Walton Viola Concerto when Lionel Curtis, for whom it was written, denied it and, and rejected it. And he wrote so many beautiful pieces for viola. He was like one of the very first advocates for my instrument. And so I wanted to see if it was possible to take a very important essence of me as a violist and translate it to where I want to be as a hip hop artist. And it's been a slow process. I have one verse written. It's not a complete song yet. And as I was preparing the actual Hindemith for this concert, I was like, maybe I need to just make sure I could play Hindemith well <laughs> and focus on that because he is more than a handful. So I'll be showcasing a little sneak peek of the song, but it's not finished and ready for performance at this juncture. But I definitely will talk about it. In my Young People's Concert, I'm doing an entire interactive performance about dissonance. You know, in this day and age, we are afraid of dissonance. We're afraid of conflict. We're afraid of you mean you know, in interaction. In Just in metaphorically. general. Yes, 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 indeed. You take carbon and atom that is very flexible you can have graphite which crumbles easily we use it for pencils or you could have diamond and the difference between the two is how they're created diamonds are created under stress high stress high heat high pressure and i think that dissonance is that it is stress it is heat it is conflict and disagreement and when you apply it to music i think that it's at least when I grew up, I was afraid of dissonance because it, it, it sounds weird. It's disturbing. It's very disturbing. At least to our Western ears, mm -hmm. it sounds ominous, menacing, yeah. or just makes your teeth hurt. <laughs> or all of the above. Yeah. yeah. But what I find is after dissonance, when you return to consonants, it's literally the hero's journey. The hero's journey isn't meaningful without conflict. You don't have growth without conflict. You don't have a diamond without pressure and heat. And I just want these young kids to understand that dissonance isn't always bad. If anything, dissonance can 
make you better and it can make life and music more meaningful. So when you are in these young people's concerts, mm -hmm. what examples of dissonance do you play for them? Well, unfortunately, I'm only one person and I'll be doing it as a one man show this time. But I do pick Bartok's Concerto for Orchestra and Celeste that was featured in The Shining. And so I use that as an example to show that dissonance can create an air of ominous feelings. And the longer the dissonance goes, the more satisfying the consonance at the end is. You're considered one of the most followed classical musicians on Instagram, <laughs> I should add, with more than 120,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And through social media, you've also created the hashtag play homie play. Yeah. Would you tell us more about this campaign? Yes. Uh, play homie play. It's so funny. I was in the Brooklyn Museum and I was playing for a yoga class for about 250 people. It was myself, my friend Ken Kubota and my friend Jocelyn Zhu, we were playing as a trio for a yoga class. I realized that this was one of the very first moments I've experienced performance anxiety my entire life. Still? So, yes, so crippling that I almost gave up in college. But this particular performance was different. You know, I was finishing up my studies at Juilliard. I had been gigging professionally as a freelance musician throughout New York City. I'd been busking in the subways. But this one in particular was the first featured performance where I was not nervous at all. And it made me reflect as to why. And I realized that when we're students, we don't get enough opportunities to perform. Performing is an art in and of itself. Being able to calm one's nerves, being able to redirect one's fear into excitement, anxiety into inquisitive wonder. I found that Instagram was the tool that I had been using for the past few years to do many performances, tiny little recordings of the best I could do. And even when I turn on my camera to this day and I try to play, I get nervous. It's such good practice. And so I realized that I had been practicing performing and this moment where I didn't have that anxiety was a result of all of that. And I wanted other people to realize you can too practice your performance by posting your progress and being unashamed of where you are right now. There's a Japanese phrase called wabi-sabi. It's a perfect descriptor of play homie player the way I conceive of it. It's generally like this idea that nothing is permanent, nothing is finished, nothing is perfect. Uh -huh. And I think that's the perfect description of an artist. We're not here forever. We're not finished if you keep working on yourself every day. You're just chiseling away at the marble. I think that documenting yourself where you are in that journey is the ultimate art form. And that's why I just say, don't worry about it. Play homie play. I saw that you've created a new podcast with yeah. co-host Trevor Baumgartner. Yeah. <laughs> Faking notes? Mm -hmm. Do Faking tell. Notes. Do tell. <laughs> I'm so happy that you brought it up. Um, it's a passion project of mine. I love the art of the conversation. And as a person who has finished school and is now beginning a non-traditional professional career, which I think many students who are graduating colleges are going to need to do, entrepreneurship is the future of the musician, I really believe. And I just wanted to have a platform where I could interview people that I admire and talk about what it's like for these younger people who are in college. What is it like to be out at the gig? What is it like to start your own business? But on top of that, I've always wanted to be a, an entertainer. I'm taking improv comedy classes with UCB right now. Wow. Yeah. That upright Citizens yeah. Brigade. Yes. About as yes. up it's, there as it gets, Second City and UCB. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I play viola. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it, what I found is that I have a love of comedy. And this is also a forum for me to test out my improv comedy and conversational skills. Hmm. And so that's what the podcast is all about. It's an extension of this idea of play homie play, where we're not out here trying to teach anybody anything, but we're trying to have fun, have conversations and kind of figure out what are the important elements of being a successful artist after school. Would you describe figure eights of heartbreak? Mm. It makes me want to give you a hug. Oh, thank you. I call the figure eights of heartbreak because if you turn an eight sideways, it's infinity. For many years of my life, I was really in love with somebody. It took me so many years to get over it. There's still even a wound there today, but I never really had the opportunity or the ability to put it artistically down in the form of something. And so as I was, as I've been trying to write more music, I knew I needed to close that chapter in my life. And I thought that the best way to close that chapter would be to write a song about it. There are not many musicians mm -hmm. who can speak as eloquently in words as they do through their music. They're not expected to, but you have that rare quality. That really means a lot to me. Thank you. Drew Alexander Ford, also known as That Viola Kid, He'll perform in concert at Spivey Hall on the campus of Clayton State University tomorrow evening at 8.15.